for Rewen Keltica, fiction became reality. Ghostly figures emerged from the snow, summoned forth by an old man. Whites, raised from the dead, with cold blue eyes. They stood against the most vicious blows Rewen and her men could throw at them. But eventually, the threat broke. Raven and her men returned south, carrying with them the story of rights. Now, the mission to Castle Black seemed more important than ever, and so their attention would be turned northward once again. Surely there is something that you can do. A blessing. Praying over the blades of my men? I, I am sorry, my lady. I wish there was more that I could do for you. You must understand, the, these creatures that you speak of, they are not meant to be combated by man. You would do well to put aside your blade. Kneel before the gods and ask them for your protection. That is what I am asking for. You cannot buy the favor of the gods. It must be earned. Very well. I thank you for your guidance, but it will not change our path. We will still ride north. I just hope that you have prayed hard enough, should these creatures find your sept. You will do no good to curse a man of the gods. Be gone with the witch I have said my part. Good day. Kia ora, guys, gals, and Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Raywind's Tale. We are here at a sept just outside of White Harbor and Pike Market, where we managed to, in the last, defend the town from bandits after a very frightening encounter with whites up to the north. Now, we do have to continue that ride to the north, the Castle Black, not to help out with whites, but rather to help defend the wall against the, well, king beyond the wall. We'll see how that turns out, but we have a fair ride ahead of us, and we are going to be going up kind of this way, so we will be stopping by Winterfell along the way so for those of you who are excited to see it we will be stopping in there let's just hope that our armor doesn't get us too many side glances late at night we decide to camp the evening surprisingly enough as an old barrow the land around us is arid and dry everywhere are barrows and old graves let's explore the area we are exploring it on horseback and it is a little spooky. Now it is late at night. We'll see what we're able to find out here among the stones. And quite the stone circle it is. We'll see what we're able to uncover here, no doubt. Yes, the stones making up the barrow are old and crumpling, having stood for thousands of years. The weirwood too looks like it might be thousands of years old. These stones, no doubt, were raised by the first men, or even the children. Looks like we've got an inscription over here by the weirwood tree, something that we might be able to read. What do we have? The old stone is huge and crumbling, with lichen and decay evident everywhere. It reads, May he stray lost and forgotten. May he stray lost and forgotten. And I believe that's what it said. I was trying to be quick with our reading there. But we have fully explored this barrow. And so it seems safe enough for us to camp for the evening. So, Raymond, how about we go ahead and pitch up some tents nearby? Come the morning, we have ridden out towards Crow's Rest, and we can see some broken men which were trying to run away from us, but it seems like we might have caught them. There was another army riding down. I'll be intrigued to see if they choose to assist us in this. We're not going to let them leave. They want gold from us, and we are not going to give it to them. Unfortunately, it seems like the other army isn't going to help us out in this, so this is a chance for us to see if we're able to tactically fight better 
and the other troops that are here. We're going to keep our cavalry well off to the side to begin with. We want to get away from the edge of the world here because that always seems to have a little bit of trouble. And if we're quick, we might be able to get everyone in line over here. But that's going to be asking a bit. Looks like they are kind of staying in formation here, interestingly enough. Might see if we can do some formation orders here. We're going to ask for uh, archers to spread out. We want to go to our infantry. Hmm. No, nothing that we want from there. Infantry... Shield orders, formation type orders. We want them to go into a shield wall, if possible. Okay. Alright. So they're going to be holding a little bit thicker than normal. Okay. We want our bodyguards. Rather, our bodyguards. Uh, what are they on? I'm not sure, but they should be supporting us. <laughs> Cavalry, we're going to go ahead and get you to charge in now. The enemy is effectively here. And they have decided to attack us in a great big ball. So a cavalry charge would be very much appreciated. And they've attacked from the side. Our shield wall is holding. I'm afraid our archers aren't able to do too much. Oh yeah, we're mincing them. Keep them contained. There we go. Clean them up. Two left. Got one on the run, Alan. Sorry to kill Steel. Okay, so not perfect. Not perfect by any means, but I think we did okay there. Let's see what the toll is. Okay, we only lost one for 30. That's pretty good, all things considered. I really would have liked our uh, troops to be up a little bit closer, especially our bodyguards, but hey, what can you do? We got a heavy uh, spear, some salads. We're definitely going to take the shield, because I think someone's going to be able to use that. Everything else here, not really able to use all that much. We're going to go ahead and take these because they will sell for something. So hopefully once we reach uh, Winterfell, we'll be able to sell them off. But for now, it was a victory and we have some upgrading to do. And finally, we have arrived at the Great Winterfell. Let's go ahead and approach. We are going to request entry into the castle. Now, this isn't a castle town. I was hoping we'd actually be able to sell some things here, but it's not the case. This is more a castle than anything. So we're going to go ahead and take a walk around the courtyard. It's more a keep than anything else. Yeah, so we can't actually walk around the outside here, but we can walk around the inside. And Winterfell, surprisingly enough, is, well, very still, absent of people. And here we have the Lord's... Oh, why has it gone up my head? The God's Wood. Yes, the God's Wood. Yeah. We can see the rest of the keep. This would actually be quite fun defending this. As it looks like there are multiple locations in which we would be able to have troops. Not bad. We'll see if we can get a little bit of a better view up here. We can... We've we'll a little bit of parkour to do it. Not half bad. Not half bad. Well, I was hoping to be able to sell something here. That doesn't seem to be the case. We might be able to find somewhere before Castle Black, but if not, well, we'll just continue our ride on. Hmm, let's see. The seasons pass, and the day has come again. It is the Feast of the Raven, during which those who worship the old gods gather around weirwoods and light great fires. Later there will be a feast during which all grizzle warriors compete against one another in wrestling matches, with the winner being given a weirwood crown. Usually a big bag of silver. We decide to give the winner a prize. Yeah, you know what? Sure, we don't actually have many of our troops from the north, but we're going to go ahead and partake in the festivities, especially being so close to Winterfell. And actually... Interestingly enough, we're riding out towards Tumbledon Tower. A tower that we can see standing up above the trees. 
We arrive, and the tower is cracked. It has been abandoned for a long time, its sides overgrown with moss and lichen. Let us explore this tower, and well, it really doesn't tower above the trees. <sighs> not at all. But it's not too dissimilar from where we found the old man before, so perhaps we can find more evidence if we search inside. The wolf's wood contains many old towers and holdfasts left over from the world was new. The first men came first. <laughs> well, unfortunately, wasn't able to read all of that. There was a little bit of information, but uh, unfortunately, there really isn't all that much here. Well, okay. We explored it, didn't we, Raywan? We did indeed. We're going to go ahead and leave that tower be. We have Iron Wrath over here, uh, which was from the Telltale Games. Um, game series that they did for Game of Thrones, which only really got the one season, as we kind of know why. Yeah, well, that's a thing. Let us continue that ride north. And while riding, we have our weekly budget coming in. We can see that we are actually still gaining wealth. So, the investments that we made are paying off for us, most of them above 300 now. Fully enough, White Harbor not doing as well, but, uh, well, it is just the brewery, so it is actually doing okay considering it is just a brewery. Really, our, our blacksmiths are doing a really fantastic job, even the oil press as well. I'm happy with that. We have another structure, though, that we've seen standing out here by itself, actually beside a small lake. The ruined tower has a faint glimmer of gold at its top, but the rest of the structure is completely overgrown. Some of the men in our company calling it Queen's Crown. Let's explore the ruin. We are close now. Close to the wall. Let's see what we have here. Okay, there is a small path in which we can walk. I know you're not going to listen to me, but Dorney, if you could stay here, we'd be super happy. I know you're probably not going to listen. The ruined tower on the island is cut off from the surrounding area. And if a bridge ever existed, it's certainly gone by now. But a hidden path of stones appears to have been placed in the lake, leading into the island. Okay. Let's see if we are able to walk it. Okay. Just so you know, drowning is a thing in this mod, so... <laughs> Water can be an enemy. The upper part of the tower is just as ruined as the rest, but small specks of gold can be seen on the parapets, giving them a brighter look than the rest of the place. I see. Gold. Okay. This must have been quite the structure once upon a time. Long gone now, though. The inner part of the tower is filled with rotten leaves and mushrooms. It's clear that no one has been here for a very long time time. And we have successfully explored Queen's Crown. Fortunately, no chests up here. Not in the north, it would seem. No. Dorney, did you listen? You did. I know you really want to try and cross, but look at that. You're being a good horse. We're going to leave before you try and... Yeah, swim all the way across. But yes, we're close enough now to Castle Black that we are just going to carry on to Molestown. Ah, we are very close to the wall now, and we have a new message. A nearby man asks your permission to speak. Apparently, they've heard a rumor about the Iron Men. Supposedly, they've begun raiding the northern coast. Balin Greyjoy has crowned himself. Once again, sits the Sea Stone Chair as the king of the Iron Islands and the north. Well, the invasion has begun. The Greyjoys are going to start lashing out. But we are finally here. Let's go ahead and approach the gates. Request a meeting with someone? We can't right now. We can request entry to the castle. I think at the very least it would be worth us uh, having a look around. Let's take a walk around the courtyard. We won't be traveling beyond the wall. Not now. But we have made it. Aelin, we are here. Castle Black and the wall. Very cool. I think we can actually walk all the way up there, but uh, I'm not so sure about making <laughs> that journey 
all the way up there on foot. Yeah, it would really take it out of us. Uh, we do have a prison guard here, and I imagine there must be a way for us to get into the Lord's Hall from here as well. Uh, but which way that would be, I am not so sure. Let's go have a look in the Lord's Hall and just see. Hmm, we've got rangers here. Rangers are plenty. But the Lord Commander is out and about, and I think we actually did see him riding about. So, we might have to go meet up with them. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be the case. All right, Draywin. We'll leave the castle alone for now and ride back out. And here is the Lord Commander. So let's see if we can have a chat. What is it? <clears throat> um, my lord, I received your message. How is it that I can be of service? The wildlings are disappearing, Reuben. And we're hearing strange rubies from the Frost Fangs. Mance Raiders gathering all his strength to him. But for what purpose, I don't know. Cotter Pike reports that queer lights have been seen off the shores close to Stolith's points. And captured wildlings have talked to dead things in the woods. And I don't like it. The Night's Watch has been passive for too long. Rangers are disappearing and now Benjamin Stark has gone as well. We need to know what's happening beyond the wall. We're putting together a ranging group. Bigger than any seen in my lifetime. We'll find what's out there. What's going on in the Frost Fangs, and if the gods are good, we'll find Benjamin Stark. His nephew is currently requiring supplies for the journey through the haunted forest. Talk to him if you uh, wish to join our ranging. Anything else? No, I believe that's all, my lord. Thank you for your time. Of course, we would go to go. Farewell. And there we have it. The beginnings of something. So, we are to speak to Jon Snow in Castle Black. We need to bring at least 15 men. Well, we have at least 15. I think our companions take up many of that 15. Quite possibly. Actually, speaking of that, we need to make sure that everyone is actually near the top, and I believe, yes, that is the case. Sir Clavis Liber has leveled up. We've got so many now that uh, <laughs> it's a little hard to keep track of everyone, I will be honest. <laughs> and we will lose track of some people, but I think we'll still have our, our main ones that we kind of have an idea of what they're doing. But yes, we are going to approach the gates, hail the guard. Um, I guess we are just going to go straight into the Lord's Hall. Or visit the wall. Ah, let us visit the wall. We'll try that then. The wall is a massive barrier of mostly ice stretching across the northern border of the Seven Kingdoms, separating it from the wildlands beyond. According to myth, there are old spells woven into it to strengthen it and keep creatures of a magical nature, such as the others, from passing it. Looking up, you can barely make out the tiny lights atop it, showing where the rangers are guarding the wall. Let us climb the wall. Let's see what we've got. Oh, hot friggin' damn. This is... <laughs> oh, this is great. We can just make out Castle Black down below. And this... This is the true north. The great north. And we can't see any of it with the fog that we have going on right now. But that just adds to its mystery, to its mystique, the unknown. We do have the fires atop it. Staying lit. And here we have Jon Snow. All in black. A crow. Jon. Let's have a chat. Yes. Um... John, John Snow, I've come to join the ranging. Ah, good. We'll need everything we can carry. Game is scarce beyond the wall, and the wildlings hardly grow any crops. But we'll also need able men. Anyone who can swell our ranks is welcome. We're leaving soon. We just need to get the last supplies packed down into barrels, and get the last of the ravens in their cages. And what about the armor? Weapons? I would expect you to bring your own. We all must. This is not going to be a pleasure stroll through a light southern forest. 
If you join us ranging, you better be prepared. Otherwise you'll slow down all of us. Very well. And so, we are prepared. We have our own weapons. Our own armor. We are ready. Before you descend the wall, you take a long look across the forest that extends northward. The haunted forest, the Wildlings call it. It's thick and heavy wood. The trees are tangled and old. We shall join the ranging. The men of the Night's Watch are gathered in the castle yard, young and old. Some of them missing fingers or ears, while others look fresh and untouched by snow and cold. Mounted on sturdy garrons, most of them clothed in thick furs and carrying battle axes, swords and spears. They look a frightsome lot. At the back of the castle yard is a supply chain. Bags of grain, cheese, pork, barrels, wine and ale, and a few dozen cages for ravens. Finally, the Lord Commander appears at the column of the men, and they start moving. As the front rides Mormont himself, followed by Thorin Smallwood, Sir Melador Locke, and Jon Snow, his squire, the back of the column is made up of the supplies and spare horses, watched over by two grim rangers on black-coated garrons, striking directly northward. The first target is an old village a few days from the wall. We shall travel to White Tree. The first thing you come across is an old weirwood, about half a league from the wall. Old and gnarled, the face is carved into an evil grin. The eyes are dripping with red sap. We continue. Moving on, the column of men arrives at a small village. As the men edge closer, it turns out to be completely abandoned. With three small hovels looted and empty, Dywin, one of the rangers, reports that he met the inhabitants not half a year ago, and they must have left recently. We arrive at White Tree, a small free folk village located northwest of Castle Black. To the north lies water, possibly a lake, to the west some small hills. The village consists of four tumble-down one-room houses which surround a sheepfold and a well. The houses are constructed of unmortared stone and are roofed with sod. Above the village towers an enormous old weirwood tree. Its trunk is nearly eight feet wide. Its branches shade the village. Let us explore. Okay, well, we shall explore. We are actually on foot. We are without our horse. And so this is a gigantic weirwood. Absolutely immense. Easily the largest that we've seen yet. And looking around at the trees here, they are some of the largest that we have seen, hands down. So, we have some members of the Night's Watch that we might be able to talk to here. Edison Tollett. Some dogs crawled atop me last night. My cloak was almost dry when one of them pissed in it. Or perhaps it was brown bitter. Have you noticed that the rain stopped the instant I had a roof above me? I'll start again now that I'm back out. Gods and dogs are like the light to piss on me. Well, at least you're alive. The dead are likely dull fellows. Full of tedious complaints. The ground's too cold. My gravestone should be larger. Why does he get more worms than I do? Thank you, Edison. And what of you, Bedwick? Snow. As far as the eye can see. Climbed up into the trees myself to have a look. And what about the wildlings? No sign of them. Or anything else for that matter. Just snow. As far as the eye can see. Well, that's something. We also have Gren here. Cold is what this is. Well, we are beyond the wall. Yeah. It was cold south for the wall as well. This is just worse. It really bites my bones. I'm sure it does. Let's see if we can find anything else in and around the region. We'll explore and perhaps see what's going on with the weirwood over here. Well, it took a little bit of jumping, but we can see that there are a set of runes hung. It's written in the old tongue. Hmm. We cannot read it, but there is something here. 
Language of the wildlings, perhaps. Let's see if we can jump over this fence. Get a close look at this well. And it seems regular. Hmm. There is something of a path over that way. Something that we might be able to explore ourselves. Wow, that took me a long time to find. <laughs> there was a lot of walking around here, but we have found what we are looking for. You can't actually leave until you find everything, and that took quite a while. What do we have inside here? An ice pick and some leather gloves. Um, okay, well, it, it's something. I feel like we might potentially need it for something, so we'll go ahead and grab the ice pick and we can actually put the leather gloves in there as well so we'll go ahead and take both of those so it would seem that we can continue on to Craster's keep we make our way northwards the men in the night's watch grow ever more vigilant every village you come across is deserted and the only sounds to be heard are that of hoots of owls and the occasional howl from a wolf we arrive at Craster's keep situated in the haunted forest atop a low hill with an earthen dike around it it looms over the surrounding forest there is at least one gate on the southwest side of the compound and a stream runs around the north end of the hill the gate is decorated with the skulls of a bear and a ram inside the dike there is also a midden heap a pigsty and a sheepfold let us explore Craster's Keep, and there is no doubt a number of people for us to talk to here, and Craster's Keep actually seems to be pretty decently large. Let's see who we have here. Malador Locke, let's have a talk. This is a cursed place. I, I'm sure it is. Charming Buckwell. The woods, they're too quiet. I'm sure they are, Jarman. Sir Ottenworth is. Yes. Have wildlings been sighted? Not yet, but we'll give them a thrashing when we find them. I'm sure we will, good sir. Alma, can't remember it being this cold this far south before. This far south, eh? Hmm. We've got Edison here. Once they figure out a way to work a dead horse, we'll be next. Likely I'll be the first to. Ed, they say. Dying's no excuse for lying down no more. So get on up and take the spear. You got the watch tonight. Well, I shouldn't be so gloomy. Might be I'll die before they work it out. At least you've got warm water. Oh, I could do with a bit of boiling right now. If the kettle were larger, I might just jump in. Though, I would sooner if it were wine than water. There are worse ways to die than warm and drunk. I know a brother who drowned himself in wine once. It was poor vintage, though, and this corpse did not improve it. I'm sure. John. Roman Keltica. Have you... Have any wildlings been sighted? Not one. Darwin has been scouting miles ahead of us. So has Bedwick. Every village is abandoned. That is a shame. Let's see what else we can find around Craster's Keep. I'll head down here first. We have the equipment of the Night's Watch. I'm imagining that this is mostly our tents here. But still, we will search. Nothing down below, so we're heading back up to the keep. Ah, here we are. Cross's keep is old and worn. More of a daub and wattle hall than an actual keep. We do have writing here as well, but, uh, well, we can't make anything of it. Ah, this might be what we're looking for. Indeed it is, yet another chest. This might be all that we need. We'll find out soon enough. Allowing a second, and we have successfully explored the keep. We have a long knife. It's a quite, it's quite a nice looking knife, really. Not a bad weapon. With an antler on the end, it's, uh, it's impressive to say the least. And it's actually worth a fair amount. We're going to leave our fine hides behind in favour of taking that. Yeah sure so with that we are going to continue the journey north setting out from craster's keep the train of men and horses moves slowly through the woods muttering under their breaths the men of the night's watch remain vigilant but some of them have started to feel the cold i'm not surprised 
After a hard march, you arrive at the Fist of the First Men. Located next to the milk water, the hill offers a commanding view, with the slopes at a dangerous angle to the north and west, and only slightly less dangerous to the east. There is a ring wall of chest-high grey stone that crowns the top of the steep, stony hill, making it hard for any enemy to approach the top. While Lord Commander Mormont sends out scouting parties, the rest of the men start reinforcing the hill, repairing the ring walls as best they can, gathering supplies and sharpening their swords. With the fist fortified and scouting parties sent out, all that's left to do is wait. Well, let's explore while we wait. Okay, I see where they have managed to reinforce sections of this. And it does give you commanding views of the area. It is relatively safe. I would imagine our main members of the watch are going to be up near the top here. So, let's do some chatting if we can. Thorin. Yes. Any news from the scouting parties? Hardly any news. We knew that Mansas gathered almost all the wildlings up in the frost fangs. The wildlings, the half-hand captured, told us they were looking for something up there, but they couldn't tell us what. I see. Edison! There's always a bear. What? One killed my brother when I was young. Afterwards, it wore his teeth around his neck on a leather thong, and they were good teeth too. Better than mine. And I've had nothing but trouble with my teeth. Okay. Right, I see. We've got two other groups here that we might be able to converse with while looking around. Ah, Lord Commander Mormont. Yes, Rue and Keltiger. Any news from the scouting parties? Mance Raider is gathering all his strength in the frost fangs. The only way down is from the milk water. This is a strong place. We'll stop him here. I think we can try. We have Sir Otten with us. Yes. Any news from the scouting parties? Not yet. The half hand went up to the frost fangs with snow and the rest, but we haven't heard back from them yet. Hmm. Troubling. Perhaps we will need to give them more time. We will see. Piper. We must be nearing the end of the world. Perhaps. Elwyn. Seven savers is getting colder. What of the others here? Jarman. This place is well fortified. That it is. Alma. Went up the trees. Oh, well, yes, we, 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 we know that one. Malador. Could do us something other than bread and stew now. I'm sure of it. Well, let's have a look around the place and see if we're able to find anything hidden or stashed away. Right now, I'm looking for absolutely anything that might actually catch her eye. So far, nothing. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. I can see it sitting out here. All by its lonesome. Let's see what we have here. Half buried, indeed. Yes, let's see if this is all that we need from the location. We'll be informed in a moment. Yes, fantastic. Okay, well, let's see what we have. Uh, some more leather gloves. Well, is it really worth throwing things away for leather gloves? Not so much. No, we're going to leave that there. Uh, we are done. We're going to continue. As the day goes on, the temperature drops steadily. One of the men complains of a cold smell, whatever that means. Suddenly, the sound of a horn is heard. Announcing rangers returning, then a second one, warning of an attack, then a third. Not heard in a thousand years, the dead have arrived. Defend the camp. Okay, Raywin, everybody, get ready, get steady, stand your ground. And I don't know if these are our troops here, or others, but we have to try and hold. We are looking at ones that are all dressed up in white. And we are going to do all that we can against them. And get hit in the, at the same time. Thank you, good Sir Ranger. Okay, looks like we've got quite a few of our companions here. 
Now this might be a time to use <laughs> that wildfire we have. We're gonna have to wait and see on that one because uh, it can be quite explosive. And it might not be what we want right now. Come on. There we go, we're doing okay, we're doing okay. Keep them occupied. Good work, good work archers, good bloody work. All right, let him swing, take him down, on to the next. There are some of them that seem to be wearing the clothing of the crows. Something that must be rather upsetting to the Night's Watch members that are here and oh, that does not look good at all. If we were to use that wildfire, I am not even sure how we would at this stage. We need to watch out for those strikes. Come on then. Come on, Rayburn. Not today. That's what we say. Oh no. Oh, it might be today. This is not looking so good for us. We have a lot of dead coming towards us. This is terrible. Can we swap out weapons? Not while we're in the middle of a fight, I think. Nope. So let's back up. These are zombies. We should be able to outsmart them, outrun them. We'll see if we can get them to funnel towards us. Okay. The nerves are real. That is, uh, that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, I don't see us being able to access our inventory. So we're just gonna have to deal with what we've got. Okay. I don't see any section of the wall that we might be able to use. Perhaps this, or even that. If we can try to filter them around us, we might stand a chance, but oh, we have got a lot of whites around us. Stand close to the flame, Raywin. Stand close and fight. We need to lure them into striking. Come on, keep on backing up. Okay. Oh dear, that's not good. Yeah, this is not good at all. And we're down. What does that mean for us? What does it mean indeed? We've completed. Well, we succeeded somehow, but we lost. We lost a fair amount during that. Falling beneath the tides of whites, you lie unconscious in the snow. We awaken with a sudden start, tied to the back of a horse, groaning. You try to lift your head, struggling to make sense of everything. One of your men carried you to the line of the horses, and as the Lord Commander made a break with everyone else left standing, you came with them. Albeit tied to the back of an old garron, regaining your senses, you can see a line of men in front of you, moving slowly through a densely wooded area. They are retreating. As the horses become more tired and the weather worsens, the Lord Commander organizes the injured to be put on horseback and sets the able men walking with torches to guards the flank and rears. Dark shapes can be seen amongst the trees, but the dead men keep their distance. After what feels like days of walking, you finally arrive at Craster's keep, and the remainder of the ranging huddle inside the hall. Craster's wives are banished to these outhouses, while he himself sits at the end of the hall, a mug of ale in his hand and a mean stare in his eyes. Huddled outside, you take counsel with the remaining men and decide to start out for the war immediately. This has taken a turn for the worse, and it would seem that's made the executive decision to retreat. Following the dirt track from Craster's Keep, you make slow time. The remaining garrison are tired, and two of them quickly succumb to the cold. Pressing onwards, some of your men also start to feel the cold, and it's not long before some of them lie down, never to awaken again. We've lost even more during the journey back. The frost is taking them. Walking on, you and your remaining men finally see the shape of the wall in the distance. Hurrying along, you notice that the forest around you has gone 
completely quiet. Feeling the cold wind rising, you finally reach the gate leading to the tunnel, and three stalwarts meet you inside. Shaking, you're handed a mug of mulled wine, while you and your men almost collapse around you. Being ushered inside by two rangers, you head down the tunnel, and finally you see the doorway leading into Castle Black. Entering the yard, you see a few men of the Night's Watch training, but Castle Black seems almost abandoned. As you walk by one of the young recruits, you hear tells them, talking in hushed voices, the young wolf is dead. You hear one tell the other. We enter the yard. Oh dear me. We are to explore Castle Black. We can see, I believe, Mr. Eamon here. We've recovered from our wounds somewhat, but what happened beyond the wall undoubtedly will be with us for much longer than that. It made it back. Somehow. Duncan Little. Maester Eamon. Let's speak with the old man. Raymond Keltiger. Good to see you up and about. What... what happened? It's hard to know. What remained of the ranging came with you. Though I suppose some stragglers might still be making their way through the haunted forest. It seems unlikely, though. They brought ghastly news. The Lord Commander Mormont was killed by his own men, our sworn brothers. Tollet told us what happened. It seems a quarrel broke out over the lack of food while I crossed his keep, and some of our less honorable brothers confronted Castor, who threatened them with an axe. It came to blows, and in the end, both Croster and Lord Mormon lay dead. It's a terrible thing for a brother to turn against a brother, and to do so while invited under the roof of a host, one who let you into their home and offered you bread and salt. It seems to be a fashion of sorts in these times. While you were unconscious, we received a raven from White Harbor. The king in the north is dead and Roose Bolton has been created Warden of the North in his stead. The banners have been called home, and the lords have sworn fealty to King's Landing. It's unclear exactly what happened. All we know is that a number of Northmen died during the wedding between Lord Edmure and his fray wife, including Rob Stark and many of his bannermen. Winterfell now belongs to the Boltons. How the Northmen will react is unsure. White Harbor and the Glovers are yet to bend the knee. The Night's Watch has seen changes as well, Raymond. Jonas Slint has arrived to take over command of the garrison. Now I need you to continue your rest. You're not quite ready to leave yet. Please, rest. I will. I know many of my men still need it as well. That they do. Let's go ahead and speak with Ed. Terrible thing to be killed during a feast. One ought to never slay a man who's taken your salt and bread. It's bad luck. At least you're alive. I'd have rather been at that wedding. It seems more appealing than having to trek through a snowstorm with dead men haunting you. Yes, it would seem. Red Jack Crab. Bastards, a lot of them. Northern lords will never abide this affront to their dignity. What do you think they'll do? Who knows, and it won't matter to us. We stand aside from the quarrels of the realm, but I expect their revenge will be spectacular. Oh, yes. Duncan. <sighs> Frey, Lannister, Rathian. None of them have honor. None of them have faith. They killed guests beneath their own roof. Men who had eaten their food, drugged their wine. The gods will curl and howl at this affront to them. Manderley, Zambas, Warbirds, Locks. All of them lost sons and daughters. They will not forget. <clears throat> what will they do? What every man who is not a craven should do. They ought to march right down there and burn the castle. 
Kill the Lord. Kill his sons, his grandsons, and their sons. Kill the daughters, kill the granddaughters and their daughters. Kill the nephews, uncles, nieces, aunts, good brothers, father-in-laws. Kill them all. The North is most certainly angry. And Raywin has lost. She stood the last among a sea of dead. With them piling down on top of her. Buried underneath the snow. Bleeding crimson into the white. She still stands, and her companions are recovering, but she lost good men, and the Night's Watch lost much as well. Not only that, but the realm has gotten all the more dangerous. Not even kings are safe now. They seem to be dropping like flies. The young wolf is dead. The Starks are finished. And Raven, well, after this, she'll need to think very hard about what her next move is going to be. As we leave, ascending the stairs to the rookery, we see a raven leaving the tower, flying east. With our men rested, we head out. And as we can see, the Westlands have, well, received a whole new heap of uh, terrain. The North and the Westlands have made peace. Peace through death. And as we look down here, we can see that Winterfell and much of the North is now under the sway of the Westlands. Their power has grown. Much of the Riverlands have been taken. Only a small section remaining. The Iron Islands have started attacking what remains of the North. Not taking anywhere yet. There are still some lords that are loyal to the Starks. What might remain of them. But the Westlands, well, they seem to be winning this War of Kings. With Joffrey crowned, well, things most certainly seem to be going their way. <sighs> but the North... The North did make an impact. Before, well, losing out. In quite a spectacular fashion. This is the state of the realm as it currently stands. Most of the borders are still saying somewhat whole. You see that Stannis still has a hold out here among Raywind's home isles, the Vale has remained quiet. As have the sisters, but the North, the North is torn in half. A very dangerous place for Raywind to be, somewhere that she will not want to linger for long. This was a... Well, not a mistake, but it is was certainly a setback for our Iron Crab. It had been many weeks since Our Lady knew the true sting of defeat, but that familiar taste was back in her mouth again, the taste of blood. It was perhaps a miracle of the gods that she and her men were alive. So many of the Night's Watch, the brothers, had fallen, and with no sign of Snow or the others, the Watch would have to work swiftly to replace their numbers. The state of the realm was unsteady as ever, with the death of the young Stark under the roof of the Freys. Every lord and lady was now shaking in their boots. No one was safe, especially those pretending to be someone they are not. Raywin sought to help the Night's Watch against a greater threat and had failed. Now self-preservation would be needed. From here the destiny of the Iron Crab would diverge. A new path unveiled, one based on survival. For the good of her company, Raywin began to plan. A plan that would take them very far away from the threat in the north. But that 
was still to come in the days that followed. And to wrap up today's episode, I'm very happy to announce that in celebration of Akira reaching 100 episodes, I have commissioned some art of her doing what she does best, slaying some damn ghouls. You might be able to tell what my inspiration was for this image, and I'm very happy how our gal has turned out. As you can see, the artwork is available in a number of different styles. And even on products we didn't have availability to print on in the past. So be sure to check out rikonroleplays.com slash store. Our boy Leonidas is still available as well. And now available in even more styles. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to our Legion on Patreon. Who continue to make this content possible. 